Good evening and welcome to Muhlenberg College's annual Advent candlelight carol service here at Egner Memorial Chapel. Like those who have gathered here decades before, we come together this weekend to enter into a story shared with us through word and song, adapted from the original lessons in carol's service, developed at King's College in Cambridge, England in 1918. And while the story we hear is told through the lens of the Christian tradition, using ancient scriptures to weave a historical narrative together that is held as holy and sacred, I hope all of us tonight might pay attention to the words of persistent hope, active peace, and collective liberation that make up the fabric of this service. The story shared here with us comes in two parts. The first four readings propel us into curiosity, asking us to reflect on the history of humankind our triumphs and our failures, and the hopes and aspirations of our ancestors, what they had for a new way forward when all they saw around them was conflict and war. For Christians, this hope foretold in the texts from Isaiah comes to us in the infant Jesus. And the second four readings lead us through Jesus' birth narrative, if we pay close attention, we notice that this birth story is one built on disruptions to the status quo, whereby the marginalized are center stage in God's story of redemption and hopefulness, despite the overwhelming circumstances they encounter. It is a story of liberation, born out of the unexpected, and the last reading ties the two parts of this story together, speaking of a new creation wherein we are promised that we are not alone, even in the most challenging of circumstances. And that even through those circumstances, we are reassured by the promise that we are loved beyond measure and that that love cannot be taken away. While the challenges we face individually or collectively do not vanish when we enter into these doors, we gather together here, whether in faith or in presence, to confront those challenges with the commitments of hope, love, peace, and joy, reinforced by the songs that we share. Tonight, let us join together in disrupting the weariness of our world with reflections of abundant life and the possibilities of a new life that we hold together. I invite you to pray with me or to reflect on these words. O Holy One, who was there before the beginning, who knows our struggles and carries our burdens, who grants us strength to love and courage to care, dwell with us here as we dwell in your story. Make us to know in body, mind, and spirit the hope that you provide, a hope that has not, cannot, and will not be overcome. Amen.
A reading from the book of Genesis. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude and on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Here ends the reading.
A reading from Genesis. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The book, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, of them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Here ends the reading.
A reading from Isaiah. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Here ends the reading.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Here ends the reading.
reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken where Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, in Judea, to the house, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. 
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Here ends the reading.
A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men came from the east, came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born, King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Here ends the reading.
A reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. All things came into being through him, and without nothing came into without him nothing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord.
Just as our candlelight illuminates this space, we know there is a light that the night has not, cannot, and will not overcome. Let us go forth this night with this blessing. God, grant us courage to see and seek wholeness, sharing signs and visions of your enduring love that knows no boundaries. God, send us out with glad anticipation, ready to confront our weary world with resilient joy. God, bless us with the peace that surpasses all understanding, that we may be a people of steadfast hope. Amen. <laughs>